Hi, everybody. Guess who's back? Back again. Angie and Haley's back. Tell a friend. Yeah. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's I was yeah. wondering if you were going to sing that old jingle you were just singing just now. I was like, ooh, that's catchy. Wasn't it appropriate? It was very catchy. You know who it I is? I like it. No. It's Eminem. Really? Oh, I had no idea. It's Eminem. Wow. Yeah. I like it. Uh-huh, thank you. We're stealing it. Well, hopefully it won't get demonetized. Right. Can you get demonetized for singing a verse of a song? I don't think so. I don't think so, because you're just singing. Mm-hmm. You're not having the background music even. You're just singing. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, everybody. It's January 2nd. But it was a sad day uh, for the last day of 2021. Very sad. Yes. And we all know why. We all know why. We don't have to say it. But she was very, very loved. So loved. Obviously just the best, one of the best, kindest, hugest hearted people to walk the planet. And very, very intelligent too. And kind. A pioneer of a woman. Betty White. Who, who loved everybody and everybody loved her. R.I.P. Betty. R.I.P. Betty. Alright, so, um, also, the day before New Year's Eve was our fourth annual. It's a fourth annual. Diane Keaton Day. Diane Keaton Day. And we're bringing it back from the fourth year. We watched two Diane Keaton movies. We did. The first one was The Family Stone, which was done, remember what year it was made? Oh goodness. You don't know, it's all right. I was gonna write it down, 2000 something. It's, it's a good movie, Christmas themed movie. Mm -hmm. And the other movie we watched was Love the Coopers. Yes. Which is also, ironically, a Christmas-themed movie. Mm-hmm. And what if... They're both, they're both about a family coming together for Christmas. Yeah. Everybody's coming home for Christmas. My preference out of the two movies was The Family Stone. And hers was Love the Coopers. Love the Coopers, yeah. Now, my reason for not loving Love the Coopers as much was it's because it's one of those films that kind of jumps around. Yeah. It's very jumpy. And some people love those. But for me, I'm trying to keep track of all the characters and how they're related. And I struggled in that movie with that. Yeah, it's really kind of hard because you just barely are kind of maybe getting used to the character and what they're all about. And then boom, it switches to someone else like okay all right that happened so I can see your frustration with it because it's like wait a minute we don't know this person yet let's you know slow it down a bit and also love the Coopers I feel didn't feature Diane Keaton enough yeah I'll agree with you on that one too so she could have been they should have featured her a lot more in it but yeah but it, she was great in it and it was still a great movie I personally preferred it over The Family Stone. The Family Stone to me was just a little, I guess, dry. And it, it wasn't really my humor, it's Haley's humor. It wasn't really my humor. And I, I kind of I felt, pers not personally attacked, but I kind of felt really bad for what's her name's Sarah character. Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker. Her character, like, they were just relentless on her. Like, here she is nervous, scared to meet the family and whatever, feeling super awkward. Yeah. <laughs> and they were just relentless. Because the character, she has this this throat-clearing uh, oh, yeah. aspect of her character. And she does it a lot in the movie. And it's because she's nervous. Yeah. And I think... You relate to that because you kind of have the same thing. Not as obvious as she does, but you struggle with that. The movie was Not like... Not struggle, but 
I feel like the movie was making fun of awkward, anxious people. That's not nice. And it's then, not nice. No. Then when she went out to the bar with that guy, uh, Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. He was kind of just putting her on the spot about it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like that type of stuff. Come on, you got to loosen up. You got to chill out. And it's like, bruh, dude, you don't know what it's like to be me, you know? Right. You can't just chill out, loosen up. It's not that easy. And her character <laughs> in um, Family Stone, Sarah Jessica Parker's, is she's a little bit more... I would say sophisticated, a mm -hmm. little bit higher taste, a little bit spoiled. I feel yeah. like they were making her to be. And I know what that feels like because I'm a lot of those things. And people don't, people give people like that a hard time. Mm. <laughs> and there's Adam. Adam agrees. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I don't like that. I mean, just because someone appears to be spoiled or high maintenance or whatever it is, it doesn't mean that's the only aspect of their character. Right. You know? And they're, you know, and she kind of comes off a little bit nervous, a little bit, um, very self-aware. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> self-conscious I should say and that's sometimes that is a real feeling I, I'm that way so I can understand how Angie would feel that they're attacking her because I know that feeling I mean not me personally but no. just that that feeling of okay what are you trying to say here yeah what are they trying to say with this character like who, who, are, who are they picking on and she, you know, here she is meeting her boyfriend's family for the first time. That's a scary time when you meet your significant other's family. Mm -hmm. It can be scary and daunting. But... And they just really put her through the ringer. They did. I mean, I don't know if the intention of writing that character, what their intention of was of writing the character, but... I don't know, it, it left me thinking, huh? What were they trying to say? Yeah. Wait a minute, you know. Who are they making fun of? Like, I just don't think they did a great job of making her into this. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say or what they were trying to say. And another aspect of... Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you <laughs> No, off. it's okay. Another aspect of the Family Stone that I like is there's a gay character, a gay couple in it. And Diane Keaton really has their back in this movie, and I love that. And she stands up for them at, in one point of the movie, and I just love that about it. And I love that, you know, hopefully Diane Keaton was really accepting of people in the gay, in the gay community. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'm assuming she was. Probably. So. Yeah. Anyhow, if you haven't seen them, Love the Coopers and the Family Stone. Diane Keaton. And they're both Christmassy, which was which is great. The day we celebrate Diane Keaton Day is, you know, it's what, five days after Christmas? Yeah. And so it's cool to see Christmassy Diane Keaton movies. It is. And I hope she's gonna be around a long time so we can see her in more movies. Definitely. She hasn't done much lately. Not lately, other than that one we saw on Netflix. Yeah, that was also excellent. Palms. Palms. Mm-hmm. Were we going to talk about that on Diane Keaton Day? I think so. That was going to be one of them. Re it was really good. I found it funny and delightful. And <laughs> She's just a great actress. She is. So there's three movies to watch on. For, Diane, for Keaton. Diane Keaton. Great Diane Keaton movies. Yes. And also, this episode is just a little um, run through of our Christmas and New Year's. We got this lovely tea set here. 
from our dear friend Tammy. <laughs> we talk about Tammy on this channel quite often. Tea time with Tammy. Yes, Tammy's tea time with Tammy. She's not here, but she got us this beautiful teal tea set. Isn't that pretty? Yes. Lovely. It's still hot. What do you know? I told you it would be. That's good. And the company that made the teacups and these cute spoons is called Pinky Up Tea. Pinky Up. From? PinkyUpTea.com. Seattle, Washington. Yes, it's from where I'm from. Pinky Up. And the website is, again, PinkyUp.com. PinkyUpTea.com. Oh. Not sponsored. PinkyUpTea.com. Dot com not sponsored, but we always could be. We're welcome to the idea. These cute little spoons. This one says, you're my cup of tea. And then this one says, hey sugar. Hey sugar, you want some sugar? Hey sug. Um, I might want to take a little spot of milk in mine. Oh yeah? If you don't mind. One moment. I do have to say, going back to the movies, Easy through. I really loved Diane Keaton and loved the Coopers because her character was really funny. For me, that movie was more my humor, but the other one was pretty great too. Well, what kind of humor would you say it is? I don't know, just comedy. Okay. <laughs> I'm not good at defining things. Well, I can't remember anything specific where you were laughing. Can you try to remind me? I don't remember Of the now. funny part in Love the Coopers? The part where the dogs got into the potatoes, remember? And she's like all, she's trying to make this perfectly nice yeah. Christmas dinner. And yes. <laughs> I don't know, it was just funny. I remember that part. There were several parts. Rags, right? Rags, yeah, rags. I liked rags. How much sugar? Just a little. Well, that's a lot. That's it was? <laughs> yeah. That was nothing. Do you want to trade? No. Mm. I'm good, lovey. What was your favorite character in, well, I guess in both movies. In both movies? Yeah. Well, let's go with Love the Coopers. I liked, I actually liked Jake Lacey in that movie. You did? Ironically. Wow. Because, yeah, they show him as this conservative, military man army guy army guy you know but you can tell he has a soft spot mm -hmm. and i like that you can tell he has a soft soft heart yeah and i love how she called the girl that had a crush on him and she called him out on it you know like yeah she totally did <laughs> she's like you're just trying to you know what, what does she say I forget it be good for be a man in front of your dad or something. I don't know. She totally, you know, hit the nail on the head. Hit the nail on the head, and he didn't like that. <laughs> nope. Anyway, you gotta watch it to see it to see what we're talking about. But I thought it was good. And then the character, my favorite character in the Family Stone. I do like Sarah Jessica Parker in it. Yeah. I think she was a good sport. Mm -hmm. And also, I really like the gay couple. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you were just about to try your tea. I was? I think. Oh. Have you had any yet? No, have you? Do you want to sip? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry for the background noise slash Adam. He's okay. He's not really making that much noise. But the laundry is... Mm. It's good. You want to try it? Sure. So, b before Adam had to eat his food, you were talking about... What were you That's talking? yummy. Isn't it good? What was I talking about? Yeah. I'm asking you. Oh. You were talking about your favorite characters? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so in uh, 
Family Stone, it would be Sarah Jessica Parker and the gay couple. And obviously Diane Keaton, but... Mm -hmm. um, and then in Love the Coopers, I like Jake Lacey's character and... Uh, probably Alan Arkin. Mm. Mm-hmm. That was a cute story. A little confusing, but... I mean, they could have built on their story a little better, like, I don't know. And it's got, um, Dan from The Commerce in it. Yeah, so Dan, John Goodman and Diane Keaton, I Are think were couple. my favorite. Yeah, they're a couple. They're my favorite in the movie, my favorite characters. Yeah. I think, and then in the other movie, I, I want to say Sarah Jessica Parker's character was my favorite character. Good choice. And also, of course, Diane Keaton. So you guys should check out that movie, those two movies. Again, also Palms on Netflix. Yeah, Palms was really good. I don't know if it's really still good. on there. Isn't it? On it Netflix. might not be. Well, if you can find it anywhere, it's a really good one. Palms. P-O-M-S, like pom-poms. And, um... Pam Greer is in it. Oh, yes. Which I just love her. She's the best. She was in The L Word. Yes. She played, she played Bet's sister, Kit. So she was really good in it. Great movie. Funny. This tea is excellent. Isn't it? I want another sip. Isn't it so good? It is. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. Tea time with Tammy. Only Tammy's not here. So how was our Christmas, honey? It was good. It was. We got a, a lot of nice gifts. I got some candles, which I'm big on candles right now. Big. Um, but it's a beautiful candle. It's in a glass. Um, what do they call that when they put a candle in it? No. Votive? Votive. Is that what it is? I think so. It's, in this, it's this tall glass candle. Beautiful. And the smell is navy. Marine breeze. Marine breeze. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, what are some of your favorite gifts? I got a lot of favorite gifts. Let me jog my memory. It has been a week. It went by in such a flash. Now it's like, oh yeah, Christmas. Um, and we still have our tree up, which we need to get down to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm looking forward to that. Not. Um, I got a Apple Watch from my honey. It's really, really awesome. I never thought I'd ever have one. I've never really, deep down, had an interest other than counting steps and um, the workouts and everything. Um, but I love it. It's actually really, really cool. And she bought this. This strap didn't come with it. She bought this extra, and it's it's kind of like magnetic. It's kind of like a meshy metal, um, but it's really cool. And Siri thought I was talking to her just now. Um, it has a lot of functions that I haven't figured out yet, but I've got most of them down. It, yeah, it's great. I can talk on the phone, so when I'm out for a walk with the dog, I don't need to bring my phone with me. I'm counting my steps and my activity levels, and if somebody needs to get a hold of me, I can just answer on my watch. So, and it's got music on there. Music, right? yep. Now she, now she just needs to get some Apple AirPod Pros. No. You don't and a screen protector. I still need to order oh, yeah. a screen protector. You don't really like earbuds, huh? You like headphones better? I like better? headphones better, yeah. Yeah. But earbuds are okay. Mm. Yeah, the wireless headphones I have do pretty good. They hook up to it. Um... And we got some nice gifts from our families, her mom, my parents. We got an air fryer. My mother got us an air fryer. Can't wait to use it. 
We're gonna do, I think the first thing we're gonna do in is like chicken nuggets or chicken strips and I don't know. Fish and chips maybe. Fish and chips. Um, maybe some green beans. Maybe some fried uh, cauliflower. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we got spoiled this year like we do every year. We got some gift cards, some really nice gift cards. Yes, and she got me a $100 gift card to Gold Belly. And Gold Belly is basically an online marketplace of different restaurants around the United States that sell out their food to go, like they ship it. So I got some homemade pastas and sauces that I've tried before and loved and I just wanted to get them again. I knew so, my I knew my wifey would need to keep stocked up on her noodles. Not just any noodles, pasta noodles. Pasta. Not just, you know, Asian noodles, but Italian pasta. Like real, authentic nudes. Yes, and but I think my favorite gift that she got me was this Katy Perry book. It's like a biography and my candle and obviously the gold belly gift card. The book I wasn't sure if you'd love love. I mean I knew you'd love it because it's Katy Perry but I know you have a hard time, you, like you can't read an actual physical book. Yeah, it's hard for me to hold it and turn the pages and all that, but we're going to read it together. Yeah, I can just read it to you, and it's, it has a lot of pictures in it, so, which is good eye candy for her. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I love eye candy of Katie. Um, and some shorts, which I'm wearing right now. Your favorite brand. Of shorts, yeah. yeah. She got me two pair, which I love. And let me go close that a little bit. I'm trying to think what else she got me. A really cool Nike long sleeve shirt. It's purple with a swish. It has a Nike swish right here. I would be wearing it, but it's too hot to wear it right now. Yeah. It's for when I go out of the house. What's that material? Dry, it's their line called Dry Fit. Dry Fit, yeah. But basically what that is, is like a, like a, I don't know, Lycra? Or, um, you know, it's like more nylon-y, sweat-proof. Yeah, sweat-proof. Workout clothes. Yeah. But for Haley, it's a nice thermal, you know. Shirt. Shirt. Not too heavy, not too thick, but it keeps her warm. Mm-hmm. So. And I got a beautiful sweatshirt from one of my caregivers. It's an Under Armour, and she had it altered for me. And I, it was just a thoughtful gift. Really thoughtful. Really pretty. It was a surprise. Um, maybe I'll include some photos. Yeah. Of them. And my big gift, which is kind of to myself and from my family, is we're going to Vegas in a couple weeks. And I'm going to see Katie perform live. She's stoked. My second time seeing her live ever. Ironically, I've only seen her once so far. But I get to see her again. And Hopefully you get to meet her again. I would love to meet her again, odds. But you know, if I don't, then I don't. But, um, Omicron be damned. Ah, That's all I'm saying. It won't be that bad. We're all boosted up, we got our boosters. We're gonna have our masks on and just be ready. Want some more? I haven't been in an airplane in five years. Wish us luck on the airplane and with the crowds. And with my wheelchair. And with staying healthy. Yes. It should be fun though, we're stoked. I'm stoked, yes. Haley said she's gonna shut down the gift shop when we get there and just be like, 
I'm gonna go in there and make them close the place down and I'm just gonna buy everything. Basically. <laughs> Cause where she's touring they have like a, a shop there where you can go and buy her merch. At the hotel. Yeah. And it's just like just a store of Katie's stuff. And I'm gonna be in heaven. Just like when we went, you went to the Britney concert. Yeah. And had, it was all Britney stuff. Yeah. But it was crowded in there. People were rude and they wouldn't like, I don't know. Was it crowded in there? I barely really crowded. Remember. Yeah. People barge in front of you and they don't let you look at stuff. And, and my good friend at the time, she had surprised me and bought me a t shirt, a Britney Spears t shirt. And, uh,. I wish I still had it. R.I.P. Sad. Um, but, you know, hopefully this is fresh start, new beginnings, and I'm gonna have a Katie shirt yet again, and... Hopefully you'll get to meet her again and get her autograph. That would be amazing. Let's just pray that that happens. I won't get to have her kiss me on the cheek again, because everyone's masked up. Yeah. And I don't even think she's hugging anyone anymore. Well, that's probably safe, the safe thing. I know when we met her, we, you know, we hugged her. We had all our arms around each other when we were taking a picture. It's definitely pre-COVID. It's gonna be way different if you meet her this time. Yeah. More regulations. But hey, it would still be amazing to meet her. Yeah. And to talk to her again. Yeah. She's such a great human being. She is. And we've seen little blips of her show already. I'm trying not to see any of it. Yeah, I'm like, why are you <laughs> well, getting she, sneak previews? She performed live for New Year's Eve. I wanted to see it. Oh, yeah, of course. You couldn't miss the New Year's Eve show. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. So that will be, we're going to be leaving in two weeks. And I'm nervous but excited at the same time. Me too. I know it'll all go smooth and it'll be great. I just wish I could stay in my wheelchair on the airplane. That's the only thing. Like, people don't realize how much of a pain it is to have to get lifted out of your I chair and make lifted. sure everything goes safely and they give you enough time and space to get on the plane the way you need to get on the plane. Yeah. You need another sip. Yeah, another sip. This has caffeine in it, everyone, so hopefully this won't keep me up tonight. <laughs> but we're going to have a good time in Vegas. It's going to be great. It is. I've been saving for it, so. And back to the Christmas presents. I think all of mine are, I don't have a favorite. I love them all. I get, we get spoiled every year, and I love all the gifts. The most important thing is just being happy and healthy and that is, that's all I wanted for Christmas. We watched a lot of, or I watched a lot of mo Christmas movies. I'd say you liked about half of them. Yeah. The other half you thought were corny. Corny, yeah. I'm, I'm really not about the Hallmark and the Lifetime really like, what do you call them? Cookie cutter. Cookie cutter, less than B movies. <laughs> It's basically like feature-length commercials. It's what it is. Not, not, they're not the best movies. Not like the classics. <laughs> we did watch the um, lesbian Lifetime Christmas movie that we were telling you guys about a while ago. What was called, it called? Under the Christmas Tree. That's right. And it was not that good. Really bad. Really cheesy. It was just like all the other Hallmark Lifetime movies, mm -hmm. Christmas movies. Just like, I mean, I got to hand it to them. Thank you for featuring a lesbian com a couple and representing the L community, the lesbian community. But it was just like all their other movies. It's like, ugh. Like a 90-minute commercial. Mm -hmm. A 90-minute cheesy Christmas commercial. Very predictable, too. I do like that Ricky Lake when it was in it. That was cool. Yeah. But and the other lady from the Santa Claus. Oh yeah, she was in it. Mhm. Mm the mother. I like her. What's her name? Oh, I'm going to talk about the cool puzzle my mom got us. 
Yes. It's like all individual little wooden pieces, and they're all little shapes of actual things, I guess. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to put together as like a scene from um, New York. It's like New York City, yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to get it put together. I know. I hope we have space to do it. Maybe we'll show our viewers, show some of it on camera. Angie loves a good puzzle. I love puzzles. Yeah. I'm still sad about the one I never got to put together that burnt down in the old house. Oh, the one of Seattle? Seattle. You got me the, she got me this beautiful puzzle of Seattle. Right when COVID, when the pandemic first started and quarantine started and everybody was bored and so... And everyone was doing puzzles. Everyone was doing puzzles and Haley found this really beautiful puzzle from Seattle that I never even got to open because of the fire. Yes. There's a new development. There is a new development. Um, I finally got prescribed a medicine that's going to work for my ADHD. Um, you excited? I was stoked. I had a, a telehealth visit with my psychiatrist and I was telling him about the latest, excuse me, the effects of the latest medicine that he had put me on and that, you know, I, I kind of feel like my mood is balancing out a little bit, but I still definitely have the problems with the focus and the um, apathy and, you know, all the things. And he finally gave me a prescription for Ritalin, which is, it's a very small dose, and but it, I am noticing a little bit of a change. Like, I am able to just, like, calm down my mind and focus on like doing things <laughs> and you know just organizing things in my mind and staying focused and staying on track <laughs> not feeling like I'm treading water to nowhere what is apathy apathy is it's not depression you're not sad but you don't really you don't want to do anything okay you don't like it's not you're not getting that dopamine hit in your brain from and you, you just don't feel excited to do anything it's not depression it's um people with inattentive adhd have it or any adhd sometimes i feel that way really like pe typical people can just go about their day and do things you know blah 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 blah, blah. do the dishes i go to the store, I do this, and one thing after the other, and they don't even have to think about it. Well, with ADHD, it's not that easy. It could take you hours to get around to just getting up off the couch and, <coughs> you know, putting your socks on. And um, it's not depression or sadness. It's just putting one foot in front of the other is difficult. Um, so that's apathy. Yeah. It's like you, you're just not interested in doing anything. And depression can cause that too, but what I'm struggling with is not depression. It's, it's just apathy, like nothing's exciting. It's not not exciting, but it's not exciting. I get it. Yeah. Okay. I honestly didn't know. I wasn't asking for our audience, but maybe someone in our audience was wondering too and maybe someone can ex explain it better than i am i know i'm not explaining it well but i think you explain i try my best <laughs> you explain things perfectly to me i do yeah you, you always know a way to get it to where i'll understand it oh thank you it's honey. true thank you she does i mean i'm not good at spitting out facts but i just i don't know i just I feel like there's people out there that can explain it better than me, but I try to get the point across as best as I can. You never make me feel <laughs> stupid for asking something. That might seem basic. Because you're not. You're absolutely not. And the people who ask the most questions are the smartest anyway, so I don't mind you asking me questions. And a lot of the times the questions you have are questions I have as well. Like, you know, yeah, anyway. Like the expression, it started like gangbusters. 
<laughs> well, what's gangbusters? Does anyone know? She's, what you, was that last night? Yeah. You were like, oh, it's like gangbusters. And I was like, what does that even mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Should ask our audience. <sighs> well, this tea set really works well. It keeps the tea nice and hot. I love the color. And the color is beautiful. One of my favorite colors, actually. Teal. Yeah, Tammy knew. She must she have known. Didn't know. And well, the, the box of tea that she, it came with is like like six different kinds of tea. And this is Earl Grey, and it's really good. It gave me a little boost. Did it? Uh oh, you're feel? not going to go to sleep tonight. Oh, darn. Yeah, I feel a boost. Oh, also with the Ritalin, I'm staying more focused on my workout routine. Like, it makes really? it easier to just do it. Like, yeah, I got on my bike today, I woke up, I had breakfast. Just like, you know, like she I was walked saying, at him one too. thing after the other. I woke up, I had my coffee, my breakfast, da -da 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 -da. I put dishes away. I got on my bike, I walked at him. I set up for the video and it's just one thing after the other without, really without pause or apprehension or apathy. It, it's like a miracle. <laughs> so today's really like the first day you've been able to like vocalize that you're noticing it. Yeah, because it's such a small dose I, have, I hadn't noticed. But now, like today, I really kind of noticed, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this and that's happening and you know, you kind of, it kind of dawns on you, like, oh yeah, this really is kind of working. I'm so happy for her, and I gave her such a big hug and congrats when she told me that morning. Do you remember? I was, that just made my whole day. It made my whole day, like, I really thought this process was going to be m more longer and drawn out and strenuous than, I mean, it has been, but I thought it was going to just... I didn't know I'd get the prescription so soon, and it's, it's just made my whole day. It was amazing. Well, it's a good start to the new year. It is. And people have no idea how much ADHD can affect a person, especially going undiagnosed for your whole life, not knowing that that's what this is, this a reason why you can't do things, you know? feeling like you're lazy and I don't know, whatever your whole life and come to find out there's a reason for it and there's medicine, but nobody wants to prescribe the medicine because it's a, it's a scheduled drug. It's a, you know, people abuse it. So then it makes it harder to get the thing that's actually going to help you. But I'm just grateful I finally got the prescription because it's, I'm noticing some changes. And you really don't feel, you know, it's not, you don't get a high from it. <laughs> I'm sure people without ADHD do, and that's why they get, that's why they abuse it. But for me, I'm just noticing that I'm able to think clearly and do things, which is not a big deal for all of you, but for s someone like me, it's huge. Just doing everyday, typical things. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, honey. I want to read um, something to them, to you all, before we close this video. Okay. It's something that you wrote to me on New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, okay. A few years ago. Go ahead. So she wrote this to me um, in 2017, New Year's Eve. So to my adoring wife on this New Year's Eve, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you for always loving me and sticking by my side through thick and thin. You always have my back and are there for me, even at my worst. Instead of turning away when I struggle with my demons, you are right there helping me through it all. Most people have me restricted on Facebook because of my sad sack tendencies. You don't have me restricted or blocked on anything in life. That is saying a lot. You have helped me grow as a person and helped me live more positively. Your love, wisdom, humility, humor, strength, courage, and kindness 
has taught me so much about living a life of gratitude and peace. You are my shining light. I know we have our ups and downs, and we tend to push each other's buttons. Push, push, push. And then she has in parentheses, you tend to push my buttons, JK, which means just kidding, LOL, close parentheses. But I could never, ever bring myself to imagine what my life would be like without you in it. I am so grateful for you, and thank you for being my wife and pushing my buttons. It's good for me. You deserve, without a question, way more than a sappy, well-written Facebook message. Here is to a brighter, happier, healthy new year and to another year in our lives together. I love you. And I read that every year and it's just like, I feel like, I don't know, just. I didn't know you read it every year, lovely. When was that, 2017? Yeah. And it just makes me feel so, so lucky and so grateful to have your love and to know that I provide all those things for you. Every bit of it's true. And I'm still so happy. And, and it's true for me too about you. I'm just not as good with words. I show you in other ways. You do. You really do. So, that's how wonderful my lovey is. I'm a sap. You're wonderful too, babe. Everything you do for me, you're always thinking of me and going the extra mile. Even the little things, like surprising me with coffee yesterday, like that literally made my whole day. She woke up and said, I ordered us Starbucks and I got you a breakfast sandwich. And I literally, I made my day. It's just, just a little thing to think up to perk up my day a bit. Well, I love you and I appreciate you, so. I love you too and appreciate you. And I'm a sap. And I don't take one moment of my life with you for granted. Me neither. None. Not one. All right, we'll stop being cheesy. Right? Get a room. But I just had to share that with you all, and thank you for letting me share it with them. You're welcome. I'm a sap. Happy New Year. Peace, Peace and, and love. love. Bye. Bye.